Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. It is an exciting day. Uh, Steam OS is finally here, at least kind of in an early beta fashion. So the Steam operating system was posted publicly by Valve late last night, and we have gone ahead and uh, wanted to, to show you guys a video of us installing it and configuring it and running through some of the, the trickier parts of the installation and kind of show it up and running and working as well. Now the first thing we're gonna start with is the hardware that we built for this. This is a small form factor machine that we had built in the office for some other testing that happened to be very, very close to the hardware that Valve is sending out to those lucky 300 participants of the SteamOS beta program. Uh, this is an EVGA Hadron Mini ITX chassis. It's a really cool device figuratively and literally. Uh, it's got a side-loading uh, optical drive bay if you want to do that. It's got your USB 3.0 and stuff on the side. I like the clean face. The hardware inside is we're actually using the EVGA Z87 Stinger motherboard. This is a mini ITX motherboard, very small, fits inside this design. Uh, we're using a Core i7-4670 processor, um, and we have 8 gigs of DDR3 memory in it. And then for the graphics card, Probably a little bit of overkill for what we're doing right now, but we're using a GeForce GTX Titan video card in here. This is more of to prove that we could put, you know, one of the highest end graphics cards in this mini ITX case, and it works without a problem. Um, and for our hard drive, our disk, we actually are using a 160 gig Intel uh, 530 series SSD or an older G2 maybe SSD, just something we had lying around as well. 160 gig drive is probably not going to be your best option if you're actually going to build a SteamOS system and try to use it for a gaming rig. You're going to want more space than that. Uh, so you can find 240, 250, 500 gig SSDs uh, on sale pretty cheap during the holidays, or if you want to go through a standard traditional hard drive, you can obviously do that as well. So that's our hardware. We have our keyboard mouse, we have our Xbox 360 wired controller here ready. Uh, we have everything connected. And the installation process, there's two methods. There's a system image restoration, or you can do the actual install, which is what we're going to do. Uh, and basically you download a 950 megabyte zip file from Steam, copy all of those files to this drive, and you simply boot off of it and start the process as we are going to show you here. So we're going to run through this setup and uh, show you how it works on our kind of configured EVGA system. Turn this power supply on. There we go. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to force it into the UEFI or BIOS, whatever you want to call it here, and we're going to select the particular device that we want to boot off of. From here, you can see all of the different boot priority options that we have available. Uh, in this instance, the drive we want to boot off of is the UEFI Corsair Voyager. That's the thumb drive that we have installed. And it is above the uh, hard disk here of the SSD. There's a lot of other options here. Nothing is really installed. So as long as the Corsair Voyager or your USB drive is higher than your SSD or hard drive, you'll be fine. So then you can go ahead and exit saving changes. It will reset the system and it will actually go ahead and boot into the uh, beginning of the Steam OS installation. You can't see it, but I can see the little blue light flashing on this side. That's how we know it's working. Now you get a couple of different options, automated and expert install. We're gonna go ahead and run the automated install. And it's a pretty hands-off process for the most part. I will go ahead and warn you that there is a potential for you to get an error about um, uh, unable to read or unable to write to a disk because of a read error or a lock error uh, through like SDA2 or uh, SDA, something like that. And there's a bug, it seems, with the configuration files where it sometimes will try to install to the USB drive instead of your hard drive or SSD. Um, so we have a separate video that we made that shows you how to fix that. So if you run into that error when you do this kind of quick install, um, check out that, that video for the fix to that. But as you can see here, we've, we've already fixed this particular installer drive, so it's going through everything uh, fairly quickly and fairly simply. Um, it's gonna create several different partitions that it does for its own purposes. The operating system is, obviously if you don't know much about SteamOS, it's based on Linux. I think it's the uh, Debian version that it's based off of. Uh, again, the hardware we selected is meant to closely match the systems that they are sending out in order to make sure that the installation process is as easy as possible. If you have AMD hardware, or maybe you have an AMD processor and an AMD graphics card, it probably will still work, but you may have to do some more hacking and tweaking to get it to. So you'll want to check uh, some, like the Steam forums, 
uh, are already very busy with people trying to do how do I dual boot, how do I uh, partition a drive to have separate separate. I would completely and absolutely recommend that you do this on a separate hard drive or SSD, not on your primary drive. You have no idea what's going to happen. It's very early beta. Uh, you, you can even you know, put a second hard drive in your system and change the boot order after the fact in the BIOS so that you can kind of select which one you want to boot in, in, instead of Windows, right? If you can switch between Windows and SteamOS. There's a lot of, you want to be careful when you're working with something like this. So we'll go ahead and watch the installation process and uh, take the next step once we get there. So you can see here the installation is complete. It's time to boot into the new system. It does remind you to make sure you remove the installation medium, which I'm doing right now. And then we go ahead and click continue. It will finish up and then we will boot into a version of Steam OS for the first time. All right, so here we are at our first login screen. Uh, there are some people that are reporting that this text is very, very hard to read when they first boot for the first time. Uh, we don't have that issue right now. Uh, you can see that we can actually see it there fairly easily. Um, and again, the directions are not quite, you know, they don't make a whole lot of sense, but they're very clear in the directions from Steam. From this window, we want to, uh, we want to log in with a Steam account. So we'll go ahead and type that in. And, but you don't want the default X session here. You want to log into GNOME, not GNOME Classic, regular GNOME. So we'll go ahead and click log in there. The password, uh, no surprise, is Steam as well. So once this happens, we actually get into the operating system itself and we have to run a couple of other scripts uh, to make sure everything's up and running. Now the next step is actually to run Steam, but you don't, despite what you might think, just click uh, return to Steam. Instead, what you have to do is actually run a terminal. So once we have our terminal open, you actually just type Steam, and it's going to run through uh, a kind of a very familiar setup process just with a Linux terminal running in the background. Obviously, you need to make sure you have a network attached to your system during this process. It's downloading you know, a couple hundred megs of updates uh, for it. And if you want to run and download any games, you obviously have to have a network. Uh, our laptop, or our, I'm sorry, laptop, our system here, the Z87 motherboard, is actually using a, an Intel-based NIC. So we were a little worried that it might not function out of the box, but that was obviously not a problem. Uh, I don't know what kind of network controller the uh, 300 test systems that went out are using yet. All right, so here we have uh, Steam up and running. We're gonna go ahead and log into our existing account here. So you have to do the same kind of Steam Guard that you would with any other system. So here in our case, I'll go ahead and type in our supplied code through email. And there you go. Still doing a couple of other things in the background. agree to the subscriber agreement in EULA. So here we have Steam up and running on our Steam OS computer. Uh, we're not quite finished yet though. Valve has a couple of other steps for us to complete. And the next step is to actually, they want us to log out of this particular account, which we'll go ahead and do here. Uh, and now we're going to log in uh, with the desktop account. Uh, Uh, I assume under the same GNOME session type here. Go ahead and click that. And then password is desktop. Now we have to run another terminal. We have to start up another terminal again to run a script. Uh, that is... post login, log on, post log on dot sh, post underscore log on dot sh. And you're gonna use uh, the same password of desktop.
and it's going to run through quite a bit of uh, kind of configuration files here. I'm not exactly 100% sure what it is doing. Uh, looks like it's updating some drivers, configuring, making sure it has uh, recognizing the right hardware that you're using on the machine. So we'll go ahead and let this finish. Now after it's done, what it's actually doing is it's going to reboot into a recovery, what they call it a recovery partition capture utility. And this is actually a pretty cool thing. So it's going to reboot into uh, a, a so piece of software that is going to create a backup and restore utility. Should something happen to your partition, you'll be able to get it back to this original kind of base ready state. Uh, I imagine this is the same type of script uh, and backup service they're using on those 300 systems that they sent out to uh, those t beta testers for SteamOS. So it's pretty cool that they have this working for us as well. So we're just left with one question. Are you sure you want to continue? Yeah, we do. Hit Y and enter. Uh, it's going to go ahead and create this partition through uh, part clone. And then it will reboot us back into SteamOS with a complete and ready operating system. Go ahead and select uh, reboot on that. There you go. For anybody who has used big picture mode before, this should look pretty familiar. I've got my controller attached. It's already working. Our keyboard and mouse is still working. We'll go ahead and select my account. Um, I'll type my password in on the keyboard for ease of use issues there. And then if you have used big picture mode on Windows or Mac before, this is it, right? This is this is this is the Steam OS front end, right? You have access to the store, you have access to your library, your messages, settings. You have a clear indication that this is in beta up here in that corner. Um, so let's go ahead and look at our library, and there's some interesting things that we noticed in our first kind of run through with this. So here's a game, FTL, Faster Than Light. It's a great title um, that we can install. Go ahead and start that download. Uh, and this is showing recently played. I guess I'm embarrassed to show that I recently played Peggle Knights. But there are some games on here, like Bioshock Infinite, that says not available. So it's showing you titles here in your library, even if you don't have access to play them. Um, which is eh, a little bit disappointing. I'd like to have some way to filter it. Um, one game I'll go ahead and start the installation on that I know we want to try out under SteamOS is Metro Last Light. Uh, this is one of the I'd say one of the few big, high-performance, graphical, uh, graphically intense games that uh, will run on SteamOS right now. Um, so we'll start that installation process. But if we go to View All Games, we can actually go here and filter by Linux games. And this will show you all the games in your library that are installable on the SteamOS version here. So like you've got your Left 4 Dead and your Portal and obviously all of your source-based games. Team Fortress, Half-Life, Half-Life 2, uh, Day of Defeat, Counter-Strikes, those are all up and running. And uh, that's kind of the, the main limit here. So we'll just go ahead and put that on that list of installs too. But let's go back and look at the store and see some of the Linux-based games here. So you can see this is just showing you everything. Because again, Valve is assuming that this is probably not your only Steam device. So if you want to buy Saints Row 4 while you're running on SteamOS, you can, you can do that. So let's go ahead, oh, let me get down to the search part of this. We'll go down over here to Linux games, there it is. So this will show you all the games that are available to install on Linux, or in this case, SteamOS, Team Fortress 2, uh, Dota 2 is going to be a big one, Surgeon Simulator, if you want to do that, Football Manager, we got Metro Last Light listed there, uh, Shadowrun, Amnesia, Don't Starve, some interesting games, but I would say for your, your kind of AAA titles, 
not a whole lot of them are here yet. You can look at your new releases. Uh, these are pretty nice. I think I'm going to end up uh, picking up a couple of uh, these that we were looking at earlier, like Starbound. But anything that you can do through Steam Big Picture Mode, which is pretty much everything you can do through Steam, you can do through uh, Steam OS. So you can see we can look through screenshots and if they have preview videos, view those as well. It might not be loading very quickly for us, but oh, there it goes. Chucklefish, good name. Um, so you got your purchase options. Everything, everything seems to be working pretty well, right? So we got our, our we don't have to worry about our graphics card. We don't have to worry about our controller. Um, in terms of settings, if you're curious what's in there, there's not a whole lot of options in terms of hardware. If you go to audio, you can see you can adjust volume levels. You can adjust your microphone levels if you have that. Check uh, what regions you want to be in for downloads, system, network. Not a whole lot of options. You can see here kind of what our hardware is listed at. You can see our GeForce GTX Titan listed and a genuine Intel processor. Uh, but nothing more specific than that. You can adjust your display image to fit if you want. Um, but again, not a whole lot of options there. Now you can exit this and get back into a Linux kind of general purpose operating system if you want. Um, but we're just going to focus on on this. So you can see we're we're downloading kind of our normal rates. FTL is going. Hotline Miami is finished. Uh, so what I want to do really though is I want to showcase. Metro Last Light. I'm going to go ahead and let this finish downloading. We want to start it up and show you that even though there's not a whole lot of options yet, for SteamOS there are, there are going to be uh, AAA level PC gaming titles available for it. So we'll, we'll check back in a little bit once this is done downloading. So it's been a little while. We got to finish our download of Metro Last Light, so we're going to go ahead and launch it um, and uh, show you a little bit of I mean, basically it'll start just like any other big picture mode game, but something to keep in mind as we wait through these slightly longer than need, needed uh, intro screens is that SteamOS is running its games in OpenGL, whereas on Windows almost all of the games are using DirectX. So there's going to be differences in image quality, there's going to be differences in uh, uh, settings and all that kind of thing, and, and actually in this particular game, the only one we've really tested they would have potentially high quality uh, image settings, the differences are pretty substantial as you'll see, right? So it still looks good, it's still a, a, a high-end looking game, but if we go over here to our options and we look at, you know, you've got, you've got your normal sound options, game options, you've got your control options, but under video, you get this bar, which lets you increase or decrease something right and it's very vague about what you're actually controlling and we have no real idea what this is enabling or not i will say that i'll just default up towards here towards the highest end since we're running a gtx titan uh on it and we'll uh keep that and uh we'll uh start up a game here uh put it on easy mode real quick just show you that um the dark ones came much everything loads and runs and the audio works, uh, and uh, you can see here that the, it's, it's rendering. It still looks pretty good. Uh, I'd have to, we need to spend some more time with this, compare it to, say, what the image quality looks maxed out uh, on a Titan on a Windows configuration, for example, because here, no, we don't really have any kind of frame of reference. It's a little bit, without seeing them side by side, it's hard to tell, but it still looks pretty good at first glance. Controls are good. Uh, the frame rate seems smooth to me, sitting here and way too close to a TV. Um, hopefully he doesn't mind me sh shooting between these guys. Oh. Oh, oh, it's a little demented of an intro sequence here. Oh, I'm sorry. going to be in trouble.
Artyom. Wake up, Artyom. It's me, Khan. Nightmares, eh? No wonder. So that is the intro uh, sequence to Metro Last Light. I hope we didn't spoil anything for anybody. Um, I mean, it looks good. It runs. We played some um, some Hotline Miami, uh, FTL. Now we're just showing you guys some Metro 2033. It's working. It's up and running. This is Steam OS, GTX Titan. Just standard Intel configuration on the processor 4670K. Uh, and we walked you through the setup and installation. We're going to spend a lot more time with SteamOS. We're going to try to compare, like I said, image quality between these games where they are, where they have them available on both platforms. And uh, I expect on next week we'll go through another process of kind of building a complete system, installing the operating operating system again, seeing what has changed, uh, and uh, going through that whole setup again. So thank you guys for joining us for this quick look at installing and configuring SteamOS. Let us know if you have any questions or if you have any good or bad experiences with your own usage of SteamOS from this point, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys.